Hi, I'm Michael Kingsbury. I'm the writer-director of Gulag Magadan. This is my film commentary, part eight, on the Gulag Magadan film. And I hope you enjoy the commentary. Let's get started. And he who is not sufficiently courageous even to defend his soul, don't let him be proud of his progressive views. Don't let him boast he is an academician or people's artist, merited figure, or the general, let him say to himself, I am in herd and coward. It's all same to me as long as I'm fed and warm. Even this path, which is most modest of all paths of resistance, will not be easy for us. But it is much easier than self-immolation or hunger strikes Flames will not envelop your body, your eyeballs will not burst from heat, and brown bread and clean water will always be available to your family. This is an important scene coming up in which uh, the Gulag dissidents um, um, attempt to um, go in deeper into the reasons of why they were uh, put into the Gulag being that um, they supposedly already committed the crimes of, um, uh, in Larissa's case, of insulting a commissar, and in, um, in Elizabeth's case, of uh, smuggling the Kurganov documents to the West. So they're, they're trying to figure out um, why, the, uh, the deeper reasons um, that they are in the Gulag. And it's the path that all dissidents, that we all go through, and we go through different layers of understanding different layers of facts and it's important and I wanted to show this that the dissidents talk to each other they ask questions from each other they learn from each other and this is very important in terms of exploration and, and human understanding as a dissident because we need to share our, what we know and uh, these dissidents ask each other and they bounce ideas off each other so uh, this is an interesting scene I believe this is the scene with Armand Hammer and that's a biggie because Armand Hammer actually was the, the, the financial conduit um, between New York and um, the USSR. Um, Lenin introduced Armand Hammer to Stalin and told him this was the money guy to the West. And Armand Hammer, and this is well documented, uh, ran Gulag asbestos mines in the Urals, which were horrific and killed tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, through the most horrific uh, lung cancer deaths imaginable. That was Armand Hammer. He was getting cheap asbestos uh, through his, his uh, gulag camps. That capitalism was, was completely involved with, with uh, USSR. It's, it's a myth that it was a socialist workers' paradise. It wasn't. It was founded by New York City bankers, and Armand Hammer kept the money line going to the USSR for its entire span. And uh, let's continue. But if it wasn't documents, then what? What other. What was it? What other... I don't know. Something more important than documents. You mean when we start to feel certain way? Kind of. Yes. can't seem to figure it out. When security caught me, I thought I knew reason why. Documents, but... But no, it's something else. What GRU were you with? Ekaterina Berg GRU. Uh, my commissar told me bragged about Arm and Hammer had worked with the Katerina's book, GRU. That makes sense. 
they were worried about something other than documents, it seemed as well. But I don't know what. I don't know. You had something they didn't like. Yes. They would have shot me if Kurganov papers had any effect. Yes. If we had committed crimes, we would have been shot. We must have committed greater crimes. What could possibly be greater crimes? It's an important uh, line. Um, what could be possibly greater crimes? And it was crimes of the soul. In other words, the crimes that um, these two dissidents uh, committed um, was on the, on the spiritual level. It wasn't on a technical level. It was uh, something that they had some strength that they had in them that was a crime against the Soviet state, a crime against the God of Marx. Crimes of the soul. Is, is what a lot of dissidents were put in the gulag for because they didn't, um, in, in their heart of hearts, they didn't worship Karl Marx as the god. And uh, this is a, a key core element in, in a dissident. And it goes way down to the very bottom level of what makes a dissident. And that they have the integrity to have a soul. And just by having a soul and having that connection with, with a higher spirit that they have committed a crime. Crimes of soul? Crimes of soul. It's a very important subject of the genocide of 65 million, mostly Europeans, in the Marxist USSR Gulag from 1917 to 1991. I'm Michael Kingsbury, and thank you for watching.